Yeah, okay. So I'm here with Sean Cornelly and Michelle Barker of the Big Ideas School in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, I found, shoot, I don't know how I found out about you folks, uh, somewhere on social media. And uh, you are all have started a very unique learning opportunity there in Cedar Rapids. And I want to ask you some questions about it, but maybe you could just uh, give, give us a quick uh, overview. And I'll tell uh, folks that a lot of your, uh, really everything they would want to know, a lot that they want to know about the school is at your website, uh, the big, is it thebigideasschool.org? Big Ideas Group. Big Ideas Group. Org. Yeah, fabulous website with lots of information that I'm going to uh, uh, peel off and help publicize. But uh, give us a give us a short overview of what you're doing. Sure. So the Big Ideas Group School is designed to supplement the National High School, uh, and that supplementation is eventually going to hopefully design away from the the obsolescence of high school. Um, so right now we exist as a supplement. Uh, kids enroll in our school for anywhere from 50 to 100 percent of their day, um, and the kids pitch projects uh, to other students and to the teachers. Uh, then the school democratically votes on whether those projects should be funded um, using either our actual funds or just the time of the school. Um, and then once those projects get started, the student begins doing a lot of things that are really not very traditional when you think of normal school. They begin to build a network of content experts from the community. They begin to sort of uh, curate a list of, of content standards and direct instruction they're going to need to get that done. They start to make a, you know, a plan for the month or two months or year that their project is going to take. Uh, and they really become a project manager. Um, and a really great example of that is we have a student right now who's putting on a, a conference for women uh, because she came to me and said, hey, I really want to be a businesswoman, but I'm terrified because all I ever hear is that that's really hard for women and you end up having to make horrible decisions in your 20s about having a family and things like that. And she said, there's got to be people out there who have thought about this and figured this out. Why is this information so hard to find? And she went about it in a very sort of student way of just wanting to read some books and, you know, figure it out. And I said, you know, let's, let's invite these people in and, like, have a conversation and record that and turn it into kind of a TED-like day, although we're not uh, officially a TEDx event. Um, and that has just blown up into her reading all this information on neuroscience and genetics and uh, just you know anything that sort of circles around that big idea that she asked that is really what you think of as common core you know, content. And so that's really what we do. We're a model that, that puts the project first and the question first, and we believe that a really good question will spin off what we think of as regular school content. Yeah, and you know, so much of what you're doing there that I was able to glean from your website is exactly what uh, it's, it's what other folks are doing uh, that they would maybe call a, a capstone project, a, a one-off uh, project at the end of a year or the end of three or four years in middle school or high school. So what I'm really interested in finding out from you folks is, is how you are implementing this and, and how you see this going forward maybe on a, on a larger scale. You've essentially created uh, maybe at this point a school within a school or a school external to a traditional school. Uh, uh, do you have how, how many students and teachers do you have involved in this now? So we're really small on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. That's very intentional. We live, in a, we live in a political climate where if we had said we're going to take 200 kids and eight teachers and we're just going to do this, that political climate would have said, you know, we can't afford that. This is that. Um, so instead we said, you know, let's start it really small, let's get really good products, let's work with a, 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 a wide spectrum of students, so this isn't just for gifted kids or this isn't just for special ed, you know, it's, mm -hmm. we represent our district and that's actually a school policy. We admit kids based on the um, percentages of our district as a whole. Um, and our model really is if we can prove and show that these kids' projects can be mapped back to common standards. Um, but they were delivered in a way that was was so high efficacy and so high interest that they're actually moving faster than you normally would in a regular curriculum, which is what we're seeing, that after doing, like you said, a capstone, this is essentially a capstone school, where they do, you know, a kid might do seven or eight really big projects in a year, and they all naturally and organically touch on what, you, what we think of as the four content um, areas. So we're really small. There's two of us, and we've had... 30 kids come through our doors. We have, at any time, a different number of active 
working on uh, schedules and things like that. Next year, we're aiming to have um, two to four teachers and 100 students, uh, depending on a couple of grants that we have out um, right now through our school district. So we're intentionally very small. That's a, that's a political decision, because um, we think we would have imploded um, <laughs> from outside pressure if we had tried anything larger to start. And is your, is your funding, uh, do you require uh, a fund, funding additional than what you, the students, would, would, would normally come with those students from the public district? Uh, and and, and how, how does your funding work? Yeah, so, no, we don't. We, we're totally public funded, although we, uh, the projects are intentionally designed to leverage community resources. And that might sound a little wishy-washy, but again, all of this is intentionally designed into the program. We really, really want kids to have to leverage something from the community. In fact, that's a demand of the projects. We won't approve a project idea unless it demands that that kid goes out to the community, finds a resource, you know, has to fundraise or do something like that because we think those are skills that everyone needs. Uh, we have our biggest supporter is the, our local ABC affiliate, um, uh, KCRG Channel 9, and then our local newspaper, The Gazette. They've identified that this kind of school initiative is something their editorial board wants to support. And so they've actually put uh, revenue, their, their revenue behind us and are funding some projects and, and things like that. So that was our first real big community-based win was, you know, th this company is going to support um, what our students do. And uh, uh, with you, Sean, is Michelle Barker. Michelle, you're uh, the other teacher right now, though your teacher cadre is going to grow uh, in coming years. W what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis with these students, Michelle? Um, the thing that's great about BIG is every day is a little bit different, and I have been kind of on loan, I guess you could say, as a teacher for some of the projects. So helping to spearhead sharing BIG with more students is where I've kind of stepped into the programming. So I am at another building in our district teacher capacity in addition to helping to push this project out so more kids are aware of the opportunities in BIG. Okay. And where do you, do you see this going? Uh, do you see a time when uh, BIG will be a fully contained school, or do you, see all, that, do you feel that there will always be this relationship where students would likely be enrolled in another school and then coming to BIG for, these, uh, for this 50 or maybe, well, so you said 50 to 100% of their time. Uh, uh, how do you see that evolving in the future? That's probably a good question for Sean to jump in on here. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I know she's got ideas. We, we believe in options and choice, um, and that, that's something that we hold as a design principle. Um, we want parents to have appropriate choices that aren't necessarily black or white. We don't want them to have to say, well, I'm either homeschool or I'm public school. I'm either private school or I'm you know, parochial school. We don't want them to have to make that decision. We want them to say, you know what, right now for my kid, the big model makes sense. And they need to do a, a, you know, three or four of these big projects with them to get their math curriculum contextualized. But we also have students that are saying, I want to go there for four years. I don't want to do anything else. And so we want to be uh, nimble and so be able to serve students however uh, they see fit. Um, we will be a fully comprehensive experience uh, either next fall or two falls from now, um, depending on funding and uh, grant cycles. So eventually we will be able to provide a, a fully comprehensive experience. But again, it's always by student choice. Uh, one thing I'd like to add, if you know, this book is really, I think, talking to a larger audience about school reformers and school system designers, is that this idea of a mandated school within a school where you take 100 kids and you lump them into a, a, you know, a new idea, that always means political uh, inertia the other way, um, at least we've seen in our area. And so we really wanted to design an option. And we want that option to be seen as really highly valid and equally rigorous as any of the other options a student might choose. Do, do you have students right now in what we would, I guess, call a, a really a pilot phase? You said you have a broad demographic of students. And uh, another I know, pushback that we would get from a lot of schools is obviously, well, this is great for the high achievers. It's great for the kids who are self-motivated, self-starters, all that. You said you do have a, a, a reasonably broad distribution of students. Um, how, how do you, what, what's your experience uh, now in this first year been with the students that we would say maybe have traditionally been at the lower uh, achievement end or, or kids who are not really, have not been sort of a self-starter or do you have students like that and what's your experience been with them? Yeah, we do. 
Uh, we do, and uh, what's funny is that we discover the opposite of what your intuition would say, is that uh, usually unmotivated in normal school, it has nothing to do with their, their love of learning and everything to do with their, uh, their distaste for repetition and you know, what we might sort of tongue-in-cheek call boredom. Uh, and so when they come to big, they tend to do way better. Our, our gifted students, because again, we're mandated to represent the district. So we have 30 kids. Those 30 kids are percentage-wise the same breakdown as our school district. And our school district is for about 50% uh, free and reduced lunch, um, high, pretty high minority, um, high ELL, um, relatively high ELL, and uh, it's about 8% gifted. And so we have that about that same breakdown, although obviously with only 30 kids, that's a little bit rough to totally equate one-to-one -one kid. Um, our, our gifted students actually have the, the hardest time, and I don't want to like say that as a, as a rule, mm -hmm. right? But they, they tend to say things like, well, what do you want me to do next week? You know, and those times. Um, but those kids tend to have the, they, they tend to think of, of school as attaining knowledge, and they're really good at that. And so we honor that, and we say, you know what? You want to attain knowledge in a very specific content area, and I'm going to support that. But big is about production of a project that serves your community and humanity in general. And so pushing those kids to produce something is actually way harder than with your typically lower achieving students who are like, yeah, all I want to do is make something awesome. And so they just jump right into that, uh, and then you have to sort of academically support them on the back end a little more. So you're 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 proving up what John Dewey told us taught us a long time ago, right? <laughs> give oh, those, give, oh yeah. Give those kids that are fidgeting something to uh, work with, and they'll and they'll do a lot better. Um, what has been your, the discussion there uh, in the public uh, arena? Uh, about uh, these students as they uh, like prepare to go to college, uh, your ability to generate a, uh, I don't call it a meaningful transcript because that's such a horrible uh, 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 thing to, to, to contemplate as being an outcome, but you know what I mean, uh, you know, uh, as these kids say we're going to go on to college, how are you going to be translating, interpreting that? Uh, is it, obviously your students are taking uh, they're taking the normal standardized exams uh, that the other public school kids are taking, et cetera, so that, that is, is reflected. But do you, do you, is there any tension about, about that, or do you see any issues there? Oh, we haven't had any tension about that. We have some custom software that we use that tracks the students' projects and allows us to drag standards from the Common Core and the Next Generation Science Standards on top of those projects. So at any given time, anyone in the district, or anyone actually in the public, is allowed to click on those uh, and view those projects and see what standards those kids are learning and how those teachers have assigned those standards to specific benchmarks within the project. And that's one of the other big tenets of the Big Ideas group is that student work should be public uh, because that's an accountability piece. You know, uh, when a, in a normal school they use grades and points and, and artificial deadlines for accountability. And that works for a lot of kids. It's a little bit fake, I think. Uh, but at Big, because everything's public, uh, there's an accountability piece there that just feels so real. Like, this, this group of people in my community cares about my product. If I don't get it done and it's not high quality, I've let them down, or it's not meaningful to them. Or when I publish that, it will not get read. Uh, and that's, that's a very different uh, assessment scheme. and It requires a different assessment scheme, and it requires a different sort of psychology from the kid. Then I, I just love the effect that has on kids. You know, um, here's a great anecdote if you have time. Uh, a student was writing a blog about how to build the Enterprise from Star Trek. And he wanted to build it out of technology the military had right now, and he wanted to write a grant and have them, you know, you know build it for him. It wasn't really <laughs> serious. So he starts writing this, and he gets distracted, as 15-year-olds tend to do. And he only writes maybe, like, I don't know, the first couple posts, right? And he gets distracted on some other project that got approved and he was into. Well, someone commented on it and said, hey, man, where's the rest of this stuff? Because it was on a WordPress blog. Where's the rest of this? I'm in, you know, you're, your writing is good, and I want to know. Like, I want to know about what you think about teleporters. I want to know what you think about phasers. I want to know what you think about torpedoes. And that was enough. That was enough for him to start the project back up and get back into it. Uh, so that, that's just a, I, I, see, I think of that as an authentic audience and an authentic um, you know, assessment scheme. Yeah. Well, I'm going I'm to stop the broadcast now, but if you guys can hang on for another few minutes, I'd love to chat with you about a couple of things. I think what you're doing is, is utterly fabulous, and uh, I hope to be able to help maybe link you up with some folks that are doing similar things around the country or trying to or wishing that they could. Uh, 
And uh, thanks so much for spending time. I'm just going to go ahead and stop the broadcast now.